I don't look gruff, do I? I don't know. Let's give him a good side. Guys, I ain't got enough energy to be joking. Uh, man, I've been sick over a week now. Probably worse I've ever been in my life. It's definitely interrupted the working that needs to be happening to keep content flowing. But it's all right, it's part of it. We get better, we move on, it's all you can do. This second channel video, I gotta give you some context because this video is actually the beginning of last week's main channel video, the GMC one, when we gave it away to Randy. And y'all know that S10 had been, well, I said on the one video, it started flooding right at the end. And I ordered a carburetor for it. Y'all get to see all that. The, the, what happened was, was at the beginning of that video, I just figured I'd throw it on there real quick because it should be a bolt on and off type thing, of course, right? So I figured we wouldn't be working on this thing for no more than uh, an hour max. And it did not go like that. Uh, I should have known better. So long story short, it turned into about 40 minutes worth of work or what become 40 minutes worth of content. I mean, and I didn't want that much of just the S10 carburetor whooping me at the beginning of the GMC video. So I pulled it off. It's still a really good relatable content because it's just what happens when you work on cars. Uh, so that's what y'all is about to watch now is part one of me getting whooped by this. Hey! Ho! Hey! Ho! He ho, he ho! Here it goes! Yeah, since we're in here, maybe a quick little hood release. We may even turn the key off where the battery don't die. It'll live a little crazy, get a little buck nasty. Last week is when I'd said, or I, we did a live and picked a winner for this thing. This is our giveaway truck. So a little curveball here. The last time we actually worked on this, as I brought it here to the shop, driving it home, and I had car carburetor issues and a few other little minor details. So we need to get it ready for a giveaway. I said I want to try to get some exhaust on this one for y'all. Well, I have a buddy who does exhaust and he set up for it. He's got everything he should need to uh, get this thing a little quieter for us. Well, to get it to him, it'd be nice to have a carburetor that functions. So I think we're gonna start with just getting our, our carburetor swap on. <sighs> so let's play with this demon carburetor. This carb is probably my least favorite one I've ever messed with. Gonna get you good hood light. Just a very small under hood lamp. This carburetor is a little two barrel unit and it had all the crazy linkages just on the one side. Y'all know this thing's a vacuum nightmare. And I told you when it was messing up, one, you can tell right there, it's been leaking at the accelerator pump. We did rebuild this. She's working pretty good. Only thing is, like I said, when I drove it back that last time, uh, it died on me a couple times. I kept flooring it and it would start back up. You blow her out, I could tell it was flooding. And I just couldn't get it to stop by beating on it. It, it would stop, but then it would start. I think we're riding the fine line of our float adjustment. Uh, the main reason I'm opting to just replace it is one, working on this thing sucks. Ain't the super main reason. Reason number two is as it was flooding out of our uh, throttle shafts down here, fuel was just, so as it was flooding there and loading up, it, the fuel just started pouring out the one side, which lets you know those shafts are worn. I wouldn't be surprised if we seen a little come through there, but for it to be like running out of there, I was like, yeah, that's probably not a good sign. So the carburetor may be worn, the guy who rebuilt it may be an idiot. Uh, either way, I looked online, found a company that remanufactures them, bench tests them, flows them, goes them, knows them better than I do. And for like 188 bucks, we got one here and we're just gonna replace it. Now that sounds easy. Except I do remember having to make a custom socket to get down on these studs, cause even that is a pain to get to. What I'm kind of hoping here is we can get this running and then I'll get a hold of my buddy and see if we're good to, uh, we'll fix a couple other little things then we'll see if he's, you know, can maybe get us some exhaust on it. I don't know, working on that could be exhausting. <laughs> working on these little carburetors is exhausting actually. That's about the least fun thing I could ever think of to do. Unfortunately though guys, this is part of working on old cars. Ugh. Especially something like this, if we were had old you know, motorcraft carburetor, one rebuild, you're done. But these things, 
It's kind of a crap shoot. There's so much little crap that can just go wrong on them. You can't be surprised when crap goes wrong on them. No sorry, Bob. All you can do is roll with the punches and fix it or let it whoop you. And I'm ready for this truck to go to a new owner. So we better fix it. Got a million and one vacuum hoses to get. Ooh, how come it kind of smells like sewage? Hmm, that's funky. That carburetor's literally a piece of poop, apparently. Oh, dang it! That's not what we needed to do. There was a Y, because don't, oh yeah, you thought these were all the vacuum hoses? No, there's about 17 more on the back. This one had a Y that goes to two other hoses, and well, that just snapped. Ow! Always a good time to punch the firewall. Alright, I think that's it as far as those go. We should just have our studs and then our fuel line. Wiggle worm your wrench in there. Fuel line. There's actually a little room to get on it, which is nice. I called the parts house and ordered some windshield wipers for this thing and the GMC. So, uh, we got them coming. I called them back and asked if I could get a Y for that one I just broke for a vacuum line. You know, it'd probably be smart is to open up that carburetor we got sent to make sure we have the right one before we pull this one to swap it. But look at us, we've already gone too far. Somewhere in here should be a socket that I hoped I was never going to have to use again. What did I do with that socket? Aha! Uh -huh. Oh yes! The custom ground I'll barely work half inch Taiwan socket right there. I do believe we paired it with this number right here. Oh, she's a little stubby. A little stubby lubba. All right, that one right there was loose. Did not even have torque. Perfect. That's weird, because uh, she idled down and was running quite nice before she started flooding. Give me that. Found out on that one you want to cycle your throttle. That gives you room to get down there on it. That one had some torque, but not enough. Apparently it had enough, just enough. Enough for this thing to seal up and run good. Where are you? Where are you? There she be. We may have lost that nut. We're gonna have to call up Richard One Ball from the old Missing Nut Society. <laughs> he done saved us once on this trip. <laughs> I'm gonna get this one off because it's being honorary. Then we'll pull this thing. No, oh, lost my hat. Oh, there's another cable. Let's say what's got this thing. Come on, demon. Away with ye. It's kind of hoping our missing nut would disappear or uh, show back up once we pull that off, but I do not see it. I don't know where she could have went though. Hmm. If it ain't there, it ain't on the engine. There's about one other place it could be. <laughs> Yep, hanging out on the back of the old car brake machine. Them are metric, I do believe, so we don't want to lose them. Let's have a look-see at the new unit. Whoa, one hell of a packing job. Read this before you install. I'm gonna tell y'all something right now. If you wanted me to read it, you should have made it two pages long and that big, because that ain't happening. You want me to read it, you better summarize it in about two sentences. Whoa, baby. She is a uh, very nice looking. Super duper nice looking. Yeah, I may not go that far. It, um, I mean, it barely looks better than our rebuild we did here. Just barely. Hmm, is it the same though? Looks pretty close. I'm not saying the setups aren't a little different, but it looks like it's performing the same thing. It's just set up a little different. Right amount of vacuum suckers, electric choke, fuel thing there, three on the front. Uh, looks, looks like it. We do got a bracket here that are little bumper solenoid for the, that's probably for your AC. When it kicks on, boop, that bumps up to hold your throttle up some, give her a little extra RPMs. Other than that, she looks like a rig. We do got to send back our core here. This is held on. It's got a little lock washer. 
with a tab there. We got a bend. Ha! Got another tab that's bent. Ha <laughs> ha! These carburetors can be ornery, guys. Don't get me wrong. Y'all know I have been one to bash on anything small graded, blah, 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 on the channel. Uh, now, all that being said, <clears throat> I had an 84 S10 Blazer in high school that I drove for years with this exact same setup, and I never did anything to that thing, and it never gave me a lick of trouble. So I know when they're set up right, they can be good and reliable, as much as that pains me to say. I almost feels wrong putting this old dirty, dirty, dirty uh, piece over on this carburetor. I got a special washer, y'all see that? It's gonna interlock to that bracket. It'll only go in there one way, one tank's uh, bigger than the other. Pop that on there, you tighten your nut down, and then those are the ones you bend up to keep it from backing off. Of course, this thing has a couple flat sides. It'll only go in there, uh, well, two ways, technically. See that thumb? Last night, I decided to give it some Pot County fingernail polish, and I smashed the crap out of it. And I know it don't look that bad, but I woke up this morning in bad shape. I was being a sissy, I ain't gonna lie to you. And I still am. It's got a frog throat on it, guys. That old thumb's hanging about twice as low as my other thumb here. And I've smashed thumbs straight with fingers. I, I close it in the car door, that's what got me. And uh, I think I'll take a direct hit with a hammer versus a car door. I closed our car door hard, hard enough on it that it latched. You know what I mean? And I was somehow like this, and I was like, oh shit, because I was outside by myself. And then I had to do the, and try not to tweak on it, and get it open back. Yeah, I was not doing good. Kill. Boop. Bop. And beep. That'll work. I dropped us a new gasket on already. I feel like that's going down all the way. What's going on here? I think our fuel line was underneath there and had us. It's getting hot in her. So take off that sweatshirt. That's right. This tin better play nice because I got on my I'll whoop it for free today. Get my bibs on. That's right, if I got the bibs on, ass whippings are free all day. Other than that, only specials we runs on Fridays are buy one, get one half off. Ah, that sucker got tight. Mm. Also nice and tight. I'd say that one was pretty tight. My tool popped. I didn't strip the nut, don't worry. Yeah. Come on, baby. Nice and tight. Good bite right there. Reinstall, super painless. Everything hooked right back up where it went. That's nice. Uh, all we're missing is our one Y right there. She's the custom two-piece now. So, as we wait on it, I did order one. Uh, there was a handful, a couple other little things I wanted to look at on this thing. Let's see. We are missing a vent. That's got that nice invisible ink. We may go to Sammy's and look for one of them at some point. Lube the doors, bleed the brakes, I need help. Exhaust, alignment, sticker, uh, wipers. We need wiper blades, but also the wipers had quit working the other day after we fixed them. We found out troubleshooting it was a bad ground and all we did was break that connection, kind of clean it and retighten it. And they were working, but now we ain't got deadly. Whoop -a -doop -boop 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 -boop. Take your meter, set it We're uh, to ohms where we can check for continuity. We're going to check from our grounded alternator to our ground strap right there. And once again, we have nothing. So we lost our ground again. See, that's all like one assembled piece, and that's just supposed to smash to that brass back there. The problem is, if our metal piece on there is plum corroded in there, uh, we don't really got a good way to clean it up need a little bit of a smaller brush now that ain't gonna work back there this whole thing is i kind of whoop on it and pry on it uh, i can just tell there's corrosion falling off from back there oh yeah get in there a little bit get in there a little bit we can do all this right here by this nice new carburetor that's open that makes a lot of sense oh yeah that right there is going to clean the back side of that and the brass i bet we're going to be good now I know it was the ground. Surely that thread's in there. 
Oh, man. That feels like it's been in there since 1984 or something. They locked tight that baby in. I remembered I better hook up our fuel over here. Uh, I'd forgot to do it. That would have been fun when we started cranking, shooting fuel everywhere. She looks like quite the unit on there, guys. Now I'm gonna put this one back in this bag, put it back in their stuff and just send it back to them. Kind of been curious about something. If y'all seen the S10 video as I went through the lights, the horn, the HVAC, different parts, uh, all of it, like the windshield wipers got working fairly easy. Uh, you know, just a little thing here or there. Nothing too over the top. And it kind of got me to thinking, if all that stuff worked that easy, what's the chances that is an AC truck? And I was not thinking about the air conditioning, but what's the chances she just pulls a good vacuum? But since I've got a set of gauges and a vacuum pump, we could find out. Hmm. So for these ones, you gotta have the, uh, it's got a thread on there, apparently. It ain't set up for a coupler. I'm not much of an AC man, but uh, those aren't gonna work. We'd have to have this style right here, which we do not have over there. I do not have adapters to go onto them. I got these hoses. This set was garbage though. Hold on, is that how it works? If it threads on, you gotta just use the hoses? Well, not on this set, cause this set's all cramped. So if you thread this onto there, does it have the thing to push the, the Schrader? Mm, looks like it. No, I can tell you already, that ain't gonna push that. Well, dang it. This can't go right. Parts showed up. Uh, I said I need a 3 8 Y. So they sent me one that had only one 3 8 and it Ys to a little tiny one that does us absolutely no good. So these are worthless. <laughs> I don't wanna start it up until we get that vacuum hose. Uh, I might have to go try our hardware. I gotta get screws for this thing anyhow. As much other than that, that kind of gets me where I want to be on that truck for now. O'Reilly's is out here mudding. It's still a muddy mess over there. Well, unfortunately, this is the song and dance you'll sometimes uh, get into when really trying to get something complete and roadworthy is you do a little shakedown on it and you find problems and you go to fix those problems and sometimes it can bring more problems, but you got to fight through it, get the stuff, just get it done. So I reckon we got to go find us a Y somewhere. Well, I had to, had to run to the next town over, unfortunately. Could not find a good Y. I did find two of these metal barbs though, and I have a welder. So we're gonna see what we can't make happen. All we need to do is kinda combine that like so. So we're gonna take one of these and cut across it at a 45. Get your old slice and dice. I cannot find my yellow earmuffs, the old pinky it is. Hmm, should have not done a 45. I'd like a little bit more of an angle to that. Found old yellow, by the way. That's better. Kind of flat spot, our uh, second piece here. As long as she'll weld, we should be good to go. <laughs> Let me show y'all why they call me the TIG Master 450. I'm only shaking a little bit today. They call me the TIG Master because I just blow holes in it. I was actually doing pretty good. Then I, on the thinner step, I did put a little hole there. And then I dipped my tungsten, so we're gonna sharpen it and try again. There we go. Almost like we knew what we were doing that go around. Yeah, did good except one thing. Blew a little hole right there in the back on that one too. No. Dang it! Practice makes perfect, they say. She looks rough, but I think she's sealed. But that doesn't mean no holes in it. No, just playing, I see one big one. Dang it! Oh, practice, practice, practice. If we were doing with this MIG, I would've zap, zap, zap. We would've had it in like 15 seconds. I think we got it. Woo-hoo! She looking rough. 
That cleans her up a little bit. Trying to get her pieces of her old tea out of her hoses. <sighs> We're gonna pretend like y'all do not see me wrapping this with electrical tape right now because come to find out, we need about a half inch uh, barb for those to fit nice and snug. Three eighths is too small. So we did all that just to have this nice rigged piece in there now. Shh, you didn't see nothing. Tight's tight, dang it. She's rednecked into place now. With any luck, we're not gonna have to mess with it too much. Oh, only 14 vacuum hoses to connect to the air breather. All right, truck is put back together. Of course, we're gonna have to uh, crank it, get some fuel up to the carburetor. Carburetor's gonna be empty, but let's see if we can get her to bust off. she's running she sounds super smooth uh not sure why it's not wanting to hold idle look at that beautiful sunny day outside two weeks ago it was one degrees every day last week nothing but rain every day this week almost in the 60 and sunny every day gonna be beautiful b-e-a-u-t-i-f-u-l check for vacuum leaks got some start fluid with the upper cylinder lubricant did y'all hear that rev up when i sprayed uh i couldn't it didn't do that on the old one uh this is just all over the place i can tell it's vacuum leaking somewhere and i think underneath the carburetor itself on the base plate around there because i kind of spray all around and you get a little bit of it all the way no matter what side you spray on. Good solid turn there. Decent turn there, but I mean, it's tight enough that it shouldn't be uh, just vacuum leaking everywhere. Pulled our carb off there, put the old, but it was still new base gasket underneath there. Going to tighten these up, I realized something, that if I just barely put that on there like that, the stud can stick up in there further. That's what I'm hitting. So when that carburetor was off there, if we would have skimmed the top off them studs, we could probably tighten it down easier uh, if we end up having to. Hopefully not. Hopefully she's seated good now. I'm going to hook up the rest of our baloney, and she's going to fire right up and just idle beautifully for us. stable she uh somehow backfired underneath the carb and is now on fire what the heck is she leaking out over here no why you gotta be honoring I think we finally may have got her. I would say whoever ends up winning this thing, if it starts running funky, check on that. I don't know. I don't want to Loctite them. Cause then, uh, anyhow, that, that thing could be problematic. You can say things are going really good. <laughs> uh, I decided I would check and spray one more time. I, it caught on fire off the intake somehow. <laughs> it must still be vacuum leaking somewhere. Anyhow, I can't get it. I can't get it to go out now.
there we go it's out for now this is quite frustrating uh other than the other one flooding it was running freaking really good and now i could spray around the base plate on that first one never get a leak and here we are literally hours and hours into playing grab butt with this thing trying to get it happy and i guarantee you that but before i even got the camera on that one was burning for a minute i think we burned up a hose on the back it was on fire just trying to do something nice here for somebody <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do. If you can start working with me, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I got hot, okay? I've been fighting my blood pressure lately anyways, and uh, the more I get annoyed or angry, I don't know, my body just reacts by raising blood pressure like drastically. Our hose right there, uh, nice and toasty, that's a crisp. Our cable right here, I don't know if y'all can see that. It's supposed to have a piece of plastic on it to hook to our carburetor. Well, that piece of plastic is uh, still hooked to our carburetor. It's just a wadded up ball of bubble gum now. That wire right there got a little crispy. And other than that, I think everything else is in okay shape. The majority of it was right here and here. So maybe we won't use starting fluid anymore. That don't evaporate enough apparently. Uh, it kind of pulled up down there. If we have brake clean, uh, even if you spray brake clean in a big old thing, it pulls up. but. I think it probably evaporates quicker. I pull our studs, this part up top, up top. I'm gonna shave down about an eighth inch off of that. I think that could really free up where we can uh, tighten up on them nuts a lot easier. Hip, hip. Woo, could you imagine a hot stud? Ooh, going down my overalls? No, that does not sound good. Could y'all imagine a hot piece of metal when I did that catch if I'd missed my pocket and then went behind my bib flap? <laughs> y'all wanna see a hot stud go down my overalls? Me neither. Put her back together for the 912th time today. Uh, just fired it up. Uh, I sprayed some other stuff around the bottom. I didn't hear her change none, which is good. Uh, I'm scared to spray the starting fluid because, well, we may just burn her to the ground. Uh, it seems to be island fine down low and everything. I think for now we're gonna call her GUD. Only issue being we burn up that piece. Uh, I have this from a detent cable I just cut off. Hopefully we can get her fixed up. Hopefully that's the end we need. Luckily for us, it's way down at the very bottom. I'm gonna use my noggin and check it on this one and it does fit right on there. Cut the crimp off the end there. Slide the piece on, put the little stopper on and tighten that baby down. Now this truck is overdrive, so I, I'm assuming it's got like a 200R4. And if these are anything like 700R4s, your TV cable is super important. Several people think it's just like a kick down cable, but it's not. It's responsible for all kinds of stuff in the transmission. If you don't have her set up right, you could really burn your transmission up quick. It took all dang day when it should have took probably an hour, hour and a half max. We may have put her on uh, way more times than I care to count. And we may almost burn her to the ground. But at the end of the day, she just smoked the tires in there. Oh, was she spinning both of them? You little drag racing machine, you. Uh, I'm all good to take her to the exhaust shop today. So to do that, we're gonna trailer it just cause the alignment's bad and it's a decent drive and I just don't wanna wear out our tires, which is pretty stupid and ironic to say after doing a burnout. Who knows when we get her back, maybe she won't sound like a tractor. Well, got her on trailer, got her tied down, ready to go. The uh, sun's about to start dropping by the time we get there and back. 40 minute drive one way. Uh, the day's gonna be done. This guys is how you get your hind end kicked by a car braking machine. Top of the morning to you guys. We are at the exhaust shop. Well, he does exhaust. He does a little bit of everything else so we can be a little nosy around here. Here's his third. Talking about cutting down to a short bed. I see. Got plenty to take out right there. Nice little coyote, huh? Oh, long bed Fred and long bed Fred. How'd you go? Good? Nice and easy? Yep. You are probably done before I got out the end of your driveway, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Simple one. 
Our exhaust wasn't too complicated. Uh, we had just cut it off right here. Big old muffler, keep her nice and quiet. And then Brandon has the tool in, so he whipped us up a nice little uh, pipe there to kick up and over the rear end, which I could have just welded this on a muffler and dumped it there. But I just wanted this little bit of tailpipe bent up nice. It just runs to the back, dumps down, looks nice. She nice and quiet, sir? She's nice and quiet. That's what I'm talking about. Guys, it's a grandpa truck. It's got a bug deflector. You want it nice and quiet. This is a truck you take to go fishing. I've got a suspicion here that uh, we're not done with our vacuum leak, by the way. See it running rough. Small little backfire. I had a suspicion that after that motor got cold, she sounded like she's running with a miss. Oh my gosh, this thing was running so good before. She's old three cylinder Betty now. I had a suspicion that this motor being nice and cold this morning where yesterday it was warm, it was gonna vacuum leak even worse. I think their carburetor's leaking. We'll get into that after we get it home. If we get it home. What'd you do to this thing? <laughs> what a turd. What'd you do? Pull off four of the plug wires or something? Yeah, man. <laughs> Gotta make you have a will it run video. Yeah. Will it exhaust video. It ran better in the junkyard when I started it up the first time. It's flooded and vacuum leaking really bad. Yeah. She I'm gonna fired right up last night. I'm gonna shove her off the trailer. I'll winch it up if I have to. Well, she just blew out. I think I may have flooded it somehow. I don't think I should have gave it a pump from the start because uh, seems to be running pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, I think I flooded it. And she's super duper quiet. That's what I'm talking about. Got her little smoke tail shooting out from underneath there. Oh, dumped it in the perfect place. Can't even see it. She sounds good, sir. Thank you. So I don't know if me giving it that one pump from the start was too much for it or what. Running awesome now. I do still think it's vacuum leaking a little bit. I could be wrong. We're gonna spray one more time when we get home and see. Or actually, you probably have some brake clean right there. We can spray right now. Let's get her loaded up real quick. Hey, you little ornery thing. Is that the good flammable stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe not. I guess I was wrong. Uh, I'm very happy. I don't know. Yesterday, I thought I got it right before we ended the day. And then I was just like, eh, it's too good to be true. And then how that just started rough. I was really questioning if, uh, anyhow, she seems happy, nice and quiet. Can't be mad at that. carburetors uh one thing we need to do is hopefully make it through the mud pit here we need to drive this thing to test our tv cable since we burnt that up we just got stuck right here <laughs> this is so big get stuck on wet grass as much as i don't want to make it muddy uh, we got to drive it and test it i think our exhaust uh, <laughs> took away about 10 horsepower and you only got a uh, 40 to work with that's a lot she feels even slower Sun's out, guns out, baby. At least I ain't half naked like yesterday. She ran good. She shifted hard, uh, too hard. She's got too much tension on her. Your TV cables, guys, super important. Uh, so the general rule of thumb is to usually hit this baby wide open throttle, and then you set this where that's maxed out at wide open throttle as well. This one was a little tight. Uh, I kind of thought it may be, so now we're gonna try to figure it out. Of course, that clicks on the carburetor. That just clicks into the mount. Sorry, pull that out. I'm gonna pull that as tight as it'll go, which is right there. And then I'm gonna use this as a measuring device. And we're gonna go off of the part that mounts down here. Pull her as far as she goes. And then I'm gonna roughly uh, mark that. 
this is just gonna be so I can check and make sure I'm doing what I think I'm doing because then we can squeeze this there's a little detent on there you squeeze and we can take that back yeah and then as you can see we've got more slack on there because that's gonna mount there that brings that forward that gives us more slack which it was too tight I don't think she's gonna need an awful lot so we may check it just with that little bit there burn your fingers push that back in there let's give her a field test oh got away from me uh, there we go before I couldn't even get that thing to full throttle that cable stopping it uh, it just hit I bet you we're gonna be really good right there and if not I'll just fine-tune it keep an eye on it uh, but I think we nailed it and I think we have an s10 driver and I'm sorry it become this much of the video I thought we were gonna have like a quick five ten minute segment of this thing not all that this turned into and as far as our old carburetor I was gonna send it back but I thought so I started having a suspicion that that the carburetor they sent was leaking uh, between this gasket just above our base. So if that was the case and it was vacuum leaking this morning, I was going to try swapping ours back on. So I did get this top pulled off. I just adjusted the float a little bit where it don't have so much uh, where it should shut off quicker. That was the only thing that started messing up with this one. I started looking at this and I'm like, well, there's still fresh dirt right there but here's the thing we ain't been down no dirt roads so i must have let, uh, left this area around the accelerator pump dirty and then as far as the fuel coming out the shafts i was worried about that but then i started thinking about it i'm like i sprayed this one down a crazy amount it never revved up there so even though that should that concerned me i don't think it was vacuum leaking there and long story short i think this is a good carburetor honestly we should have popped the top just adjusted the float and not even mess with that one i think it probably would have fixed our problem but here we are so instead of getting rid of this one and sending them back and getting my 70 or 80 dollar core back i'm gonna put this one back together i adjusted the float where i think it needs to be and heaven forbid someone has problems with the truck with the carburetor you'll have this one too where hopefully between two you'll have a good one uh, but knock on wood she's gonna be a good truck and just not give anyone problems how's that Boom, extra carburetor goes with the truck. I need to have these tires broke down. We need to put some test miles on that truck. And I need to uh, buy the tire place, go talk to my sticker guy. Perfect opportunity to use this little truck for what it should be used for, which is just a little cruising around, putting around town, hauling parts. Go, oh, Mother Teresa. That steely, well, that tire's all there. Good golly. Woo. Be careful, I'm gonna pop a hemi down low if you know what I mean. Dang, look at the box truck at the taco boy. That's what I'm talking about. She's doing good. Uh, I think I need to tighten up the cable just a little bit, it's shifting just a hair sooner than I like. We're headed to pick up slick. Uh, we're gonna take that stuff, but when I get there, I'll adjust it, guys. Other than that, super quiet going down the road. Nice, it's very nice, very nice, drivable truck. So I'm gonna run these errands and unless we have problems, hopefully not, uh, I'll just check in with y'all when we make it back to the shop. <laughs> what a cream puff, guys. Absolutely beautiful drive. Uh, I, I cannot be happier with how that just went. Yep, she drove good. Uh, at that point, she was running good, driving good. Uh, I kind of daily drove the thing around for, I don't know, a couple days. Drove it all over. Uh, now, in the GMC video, y'all know I'd said I was having starting issues with it. Well, the starting issues are not related to the vacuum leaking issues that we were having in this one. Uh, so I drove it like that, good for a couple days. And then that was at the end of this video is when I'd started working on the GMC. And then the next couple days I went out there. No, I drove it the next day. And then the two days after that, when I'd go to start it, it wouldn't start. And it was acting different, just kind of funky. And uh, that's a whole nother issue, which I don't understand why it wasn't doing it completely from the start. Uh, but that'll be another video on the second channel because that's stuff that was also already recorded 
and me kind of splitting the set, at least being sick, it keeps me uh, a week ahead on the second channel. Now, as far as the main channel goes, there is already a video recorded. I've been sick for like 11 days now. On like the third day, I was kind of bad for two days. And then like on the third day, I thought I was like better where I still didn't feel the greatest, but I was like, hey, today's a good day. And I think that's when we recorded Monday's main channel video. So will it run on the Mercedes? Just a little teaser, I guess. Uh, but then since then, man, whoo, ups and downs, lefts and rights. It's been a roller coaster. Uh, and it, I don't even know what it is. Every two days I've got new symptoms. Today's, today's newest symptoms are motion sickness that I've never had. So I rode in a car for like two seconds and felt like I was on a damn rocket ship or something. I don't know. So it's all over the place, about over it, okay? It's depressing. It's literally depressing not being able to work and just being forced to sit in the house and watch a television or look at a telephone. I can't do it. Not cut out for this crap. Anyhow, that's enough of my sick rant. I'm gonna go rest and finish wrapping up a little bit of edit on this. Uh, adding this piece, I mean. And other than that, thank you guys for being here. We're on the Instagrammer, we're on the Patreon, we're on the Facebook. And most of all, do not forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. And apparently, it won't even help you heal up, so. Hot damn, there's so much bs -ery. we had to start a whole channel for all the extras. Be sure to go check out Puddin's Fab Shop if you ain't seen that baby yet. Come on!